What's up, little dude? Hi, Barley. <clears throat> Ow. Get out of here. Yeah. Let me try. <laughs> Welcome, people of the internet. Today we're at Pick and Pull. We gotta find some injectors. So hopefully I'm gonna find a Civic SI that's my year. So I can throw some 240cc injectors into my stock 190 slot. I've also heard that RDX injectors and any other like bigger V6 or bigger four cylinder injectors for a Civic will work as well for boost. Um, so we're just gonna go see what they have in there and try and pull some parts, pull some injectors, get some stuff going. I've never pulled injectors before. I think it's pretty easy. Sarah's gonna help me out. I know it all. It'll be great. This is around a 2004 Accord. And what I'm doing is I'm looking up the injector size to see what the size would be. So this is a 2.4 liter. I don't know what kind of Honda engine this is, so that's why I'm looking it up. Okay, well, I couldn't find any information on an Accord this new. Online, it was all the older Accords. So I'm just gonna take this fuel rail off and pull out the injectors and see if they have any markings on them seeing what size they are. Okay, so we got the fuel rail off now. I'm trying to pop these injectors out. I don't think I want these because one of them is actually broken here. And I don't want to pay for broken parts, but we're still gonna pop them out here and see if we can find a size on here. Okay, so we got the one injector out. I was trying to get the others out, but they are very tight in there. I didn't bring pliers. And then I noticed these gaskets or the seals there were cracking. So I'm gonna stop trying to pull these out because I'm not gonna use these ones. We'll move on to the next car. So we left that Honda Accord. Now we're into this one. This is a 96 to 2000, somewhere in there. 2000. Civic just like mine, but this one is the VTEC one. So this one has the 240cc injectors that I'm looking for. So if you come on in here. Start zipping these out, just so we can get to this back one here. And this should come off fairly easily. Try to act like I know what I'm doing. And those should be them, so we'll try and pull these out now. Okay, so we got all four injectors out. Now they are much easier than that Accord. I just pulled these little gaskets out as well. So we're gonna keep these. These are 240cc injectors. Now I was getting Sarah to look at Acura RDXs because uh, through forum searching, I found that a lot of people use RDX injectors. So what'd you say those were? 410. 410cc injectors in the RDX. So we're gonna see if we can find one of those in here. And then Green. I'm gonna do some more forum research and see if the 410s are as good as these 240s and fit the D16 as well. All right, we found another one of the VTEC ones with a cleaner example of injectors in here. So quickly, I'm just gonna take out these injectors and uh, just leave these ones here because these ones are pretty sludgy. Chin. Yep. Okay, it turns out these injectors are actually super sludgy, so never mind on that. Okay, no Acura RDXs here, but Sarah did find this Honda Prelude. So I'll let you know when we get the injectors out of it. Okay, so this is the D16 VTEC injector. You can see the, the plug and everything, what the injector looks like. Now we pulled out one of the Prelude injectors and it actually has a different plug, which I didn't know and I wouldn't know until I pulled one. So I'm glad I did this. And even if it did fit, I was wondering if, I don't know if this is an OBD0, OBD1, or OBD2 car. This is a 1993 Prelude. So if you know anything about this, put it down in the comments. But I was just wondering if injector sizes or injectors are meant for a certain year of OBD car, or if injectors can be used for, for any car, like Hondas I'm talking about. So if you know about that, just throw it down in the comments. That would help me out. I'd love to learn. This is such a cool place. We were just looking for a mirror for Sarah's camper van. But now we're looking at some Legacies and Outbacks just because I wanted to see. And they have axles and I have a leaking axle in one of mine. So I was going to buy a new one, but 
Watch your step there. But I can maybe just get one from here. That's awesome. We found a 2000 EK hatch here. So I was excited to see it. And Sarah and I were just looking at it. I was taking a few things apart to check it out. And we found there's a hole in it in the bottom. So I was trying to see if I could see like a broken rod or something. Hopefully that's not foreshadowing for mine. <laughs> Okay, what we're doing right now is we're just taking apart this D16 because I have no experience taking apart engines and this is awesome because I get to do some of it now. So Sarah's like, can we go? But I'm like, look what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> making moves. Okay, last stop here is the MDX, the Acura MDX. So looking online, it's hard to find the injector size. I think they're around 440. That's what some of the replacements are, but some of them are different. So again, if you know what an Acura MDX fuel injector size is, throw it in the comments below. Um, this one, I need a little eight mil in there and I only have this eight mil. I didn't bring one for my impact. So I think we're just gonna stick with the 240s that we have from the VTEC D16. And uh, if I need some different ones, we can come back. So we'll see you back at the car. Okay, the injectors are secured. They're actually a lot more expensive than I thought. I thought they'd be about five bucks for all of them just cause they're a used part from a 25 year old vehicle a 20 year old vehicle, but they were 3361 and it cost us two bucks to get in. So 3561 will round up to 36 when we write it down. So 36 bucks for the used injectors. Okay, we are back at home now and I'm gonna throw in this valve cover gasket that I picked up the other day. Okay, we got a good old Chinese valve cover gasket and a banana. Came out to about 30 smackers. The new injectors aren't gonna go in yet just because they're bigger and if I put them in, it would run pretty rich right now from what I hear. So we're gonna throw the new valve cover gasket in and then hopefully we get a turbo kit soon here and we can get those new injectors in and start getting cracking on that new turbo kit. So let's start zipping this up. Um, obviously, well, should we start with this? Or should we take the plugs out first? You know what, I'm just gonna do it. Oh no. So I'm very good for taking things apart but not wanting to put them back together. That's why I've been putting off this valve cover gasket for a while. So it was nice at the junkyard today because I just started taking apart a D16. And you don't realize how easy it is until you do it. Like to get this, this uh, valve cover off, it's literally five bolts and it just comes right off. So we're just gonna do this really quick, quick and easy. Okay, now we're gonna move this, what I think is a vacuum line here. Move this little clamp off. And try to slide it off of there. Might need a little bit of coaxing. There we go. And now it should just come off, I believe. There you have it, valve cover. Valve cover gasket right there. And these little gaskets in here we will be replacing as well. Okay, let's peel this old valve cover gasket out of here. And the tabs were on the right hand side here, so I'm gonna remember that for the new one that's going in. Cool, guess I can just toss this one in the garbage. Let's just clean this up a bit.
All right, we got a lot of the grime cleaned up from over there. And now we're just gonna take these circular rubber gaskets out of here for the spark plug holes. Wow, they're really stuck in there. They've been in there for quite a while. These are probably the OEM ones. Oh my. Oh, they're just ripping. I don't know if you guys can see in there. When you grab them to pull on them, like they're just stuck right in there. And tearing. So this is gonna be interesting. See if we can poke them out from the other side. I'll grab a flathead screwdriver. Okay. Figured it out. I've got two out so far. So the trick is not pulling out with pliers, not trying to push them through because they just want to rip. But you got to get the flathead in there underneath and then give it a wiggle back and forth. Whoa, this one came out really easy. That was the easiest one so far. So just get it underneath. It, it seems pretty self-explanatory, but obviously it wasn't for me. So I thought I'd give you guys that little tip. Get the flathead in behind there, in between the metal and that little gasket. And then twist the screwdriver. And this one's starting to pop out. And pop it out just like that. Okay, new little donut gaskets going in there. We'll see how well I was, well I guess we'll see how attentive I was. Hopefully I'm putting these in the right way. Which is that uh, double side down, which actually will be facing up once the valve cover is back in. So we'll just push all these back in here. Okay, next we have this bag of these five little washer uh, rubber things that go on the screws here. And I really have no idea how this one is coming off, this OEM one is coming off because there's a big groove here. So I might have to do a little figuring out and maybe some forum research or watch a video because I don't see how that's going to come off. Okay, I got one off. So what I did is I tightened the end in the vise here and then I started pulling on it. I was, I was thinking that the new one going on has to slip over so the old one must just slip off. Tightened that end in the vise, played around with it, got it about halfway off and then grabbed the rubber mallet and smacked, had it against the floor there on the carpet and smack the rest of it off and manage to get it off. So we'll throw the new one on now. Here's the new one going on. We'll see if it slides on. It might need a little lubrication. I hope this is how you do it. <laughs> there we go. Good. Here's the new one. That's how you do it. Okay, I'm gonna do this to the other four and then I'll check back in. Okay, so I forgot one step here. I actually, if you guys can see this, the other stuff I said was true, but before I did those other two steps to get this thing off, I tightened it this way in the vise and started pinching it like this and that'll pinch half off. I just like to hold this side down, pinch the half off and then do the other two steps that I said. Okay, so the air compressor is hooked up. My next step is just to blow out some of the crud from this gap where the valve cover seal goes. And let's do that. Okay, so if I remember correctly, these tabs here in this hand are going on the right hand side. So I'm gonna pop this new valve cover gasket in now. Hopefully it is the right one. So far it looks to be promising. Da, 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 da. Pretty satisfying actually. Put a new valve cover gasket in there. It's got little grooves. I'll show you guys here in a second. Okay, so it's flat up here, but down here it's got these little grooves here and here, and then here, just so you know it's in the right spot. And it looks to be pretty good right there. Cool, let's get it in. Let's drop this valve cover back on, making sure the gasket seats well. Push it down a little bit here, and we'll thread it on here. Now, while I was just looking at the engine here, I was realizing I actually didn't need to take the spark plugs out. I thought I did, 
but you actually don't have to do that, so that makes this job that much easier and that much quicker. I just want to make sure it's nice and sealed because I'm replacing this to fix a few leaks on top of the valve cover gasket or on top of the valve cover in these holes here, they were leaking. So if it was leaking even worse after I did the job, that would be horrible. Okay, it looks to be pretty good. Okay, big long screws go at the back. One, two, short ones go at the front. One, actually, we're just gonna clean. We got a little bit of oil here. We're just gonna clean that up because we want a nice, clean seal. And you know what? I'll double check those back ones as well. We don't want any reason for oil to be leaking out of these. Get that nice and clean. Clean that one up too. There we go. Big ones in the back. Small ones in the front. And let's get them screwed on there. Okay, right now would be a good time to look up a torque spec, so I'm just gonna snug these up a little bit with this impact. Just nice and lightly. Actually, you know what? With gaskets, normally it's good to start with the inside and work your way outwards. So, I'm gonna tighten that middle one first. Okay, so I checked on a few forums and what they said for the torque for these bad boys is anywhere from seven and a half to 19. Um, what I also read is that they actually bought them out. So doing them any tighter doesn't do any good. So a lot of people said they just go hand tight. So that's what we're gonna do. I start from the middle again. And all I did was snug them with the impact. So as you can see, I'm not putting too much force on here. I'm just snug them up. Okay, those ones already feel like they're tightened all the way. Those are snug already. I'll make sure this one's tight. Okay, snug. On the forums, they also said just to grab the middle of the ratchet like this. Don't grab the handle because if you grab the handle, you'll put too much torque on them and just basically hand tighten them like this. So those are tight. I'm just going to do the once over. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, hopefully we are fixed. No more leaking issues. So what I'm going to do is throw the spark plugs back in. You guys know how to do that. I've covered that in different videos. Um, actually, what we're going to do is throw this little vacuum line back on here. And that, my friends, is how it's done. All right, guys, thank you for watching today's video. I know it wasn't very exciting. It was a lot of technical stuff and me just kind of learning. But if you're learning too, that's great. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one. Look, you can literally see this guy's exhaust valve is closed. Oh, you can't zoom? Oh, darn. Look at those pea shooters right there.